In this tutorial, we are going to cover a couple of useful nodes that exist in the PCG framework, branch, and switch. Both of these nodes are available in blueprints and function exactly the same, but the setup is a little bit different. I hope this tutorial will help clear up any confusion about how to use these nodes in your own PCG graphs. This is a basic setup that I've used in other tutorials. You have to enable the PCG plugin. This is a blueprint actor called BP Branch Demo. And this is a PCG graph called PCG Branch Demo. To create the blueprint, you just right click in the content browser, go to Blueprint, select Blueprint Class, and then select an actor. And for the PCG graph, you just right click, go to PCG and create a new PCG graph. This is the Blueprint Branch Demo up here. You need to add a PCG component. That's as simple as hitting this little plus button there and then selecting PCG. Once you've got your PCG component, you can select it and then scroll down just a little bit and you'll see an option here for graph, drag your PCG graph into it. We'll hop over now to the PCG graph. I am using a create points grid node. The size is 100 in X, Y, and Z in terms of the grid extents, and the cell size is 25 in X, Y, and Z. I have a get actor data node here, which is going to uh, basically get the location of the blueprint and copy all of the points over to that location. You want to make sure that when you've got your get actor data selected, you use the get single point mode. And then out of that, I am piping the points into a bounds modifier, setting the scale to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, all the way across. And then I have a density noise, which you can get to by just writing density here and selecting density noise. It's called an attribute noise up here because it's actually just setting some of the default values here, uh, the input source to density, and then the uh, the values here that it's gonna be generating uh, are between uh, zero and one. So anyway, that's how we get here. So the first node we're gonna talk about is branch. Branch is gonna give you the ability to do two completely different things to your points depending on a Boolean. So I'm gonna click on this little arrow here we've got our output to B. So by default, output A is going to be executed. If I come over here and type in debug, and then turn off the debug on this one, this is automatically gonna display these points. If I disable it by typing the E key, you can see it goes away. So we don't have to hit the D to see what these points are gonna look like. And out of output B, I'm going to apply a density filter node. And this is just gonna eliminate any point with a density value below 0.5, and then we'll add a debug here. So we should see if we are executing output B, half of these points are gonna go away. I'm gonna create an attribute. By default, the type is gonna be set to double. I wanna set this to a Boolean. You can see I've got my bool value currently is unchecked, which is gonna evaluate as false. And I can plug this into output B. So what we're saying here is, let me give myself a bit more space. If this is true, we're going to output to B. If it is false, we're going to output to A. So if I come over here and I turn this to true, you can see that we are now getting that output B chain executed as opposed to uh, output A. So generally speaking, I wouldn't really recommend putting a Boolean inside your graph that you have got to edit manually. It's much better to expose that as a parameter on a blueprint actor. So I'm going to select the blueprint. We're going to come down to the variable section, hit the plus button there. I'm just going to call it Boolean branch. It's already set to a Boolean. If not, you would just click on this little drop down here and select Boolean. And I need to make it public so that the uh, PCG graph can access it. And I'm going to just copy the name there. So now we're going to use a get actor property node. And for the property name, it's going to be whatever we called the variable and the output attribute name. We'll go ahead and just use the same one. And I'm going to pipe this in. So now we're using the value on the actor itself, which means if I select the actor and I enable this, now we are outputting the B chain. So this is a much more user-friendly way of setting up this parameter so that you can modify the graph directly from the actor itself. So what if you wanted more than one output? For that, we would use a switch node. By default, it'll assume you want to use an integer, but you can also use an enum or a string. I'm going to head over to the BP branch demo. We're going to add a variable here. I'm going to call it int switch, set its data type to integer if it's not already, make it public. And then in the slider range, we can say the lowest is one and the highest is three. And then we can do the same thing over here for the value range. 
Compile and save. Let's scroll to the bottom here. For the default value, we'll set it to one. Compile and save. And now we can see we've got this int switch, which I can drag and change like so. We'll hop over here. Once again, we're going to get an actor property. And the name of the property is the name of the variable. So I'm going to pipe the points in here. We'll open this up. There's our integer selection is there. And you can see we've got a few defaults here for the outputs. Let's go ahead and set this one to one. You can see that'll update there. We'll add a couple more, two and three. And then I'm going to duplicate this stuff. So for the first one, we'll set the density filter to 0 to 0.3. For the next one, we can do 0.3 to 0.6. And finally, from 0.6 to 1. Let's go ahead and disconnect this one. And now if we set this to 2, you can see there's our 0.3 to 0.6 points. And then if we set it to 3, we'll get our 0.6 to 1 points. So hopefully this all makes sense. Whatever the value is here on the actor details, that gets piped through and filters through the points so that we're only executing the specific output that we want. So I can show you a practical example of how I used a switch node on this project here. The exterior is created by sampling a fairly dense mesh and it takes a bit of time to regenerate, so it's not totally conducive to iteration. So what I did is I added the ability to use a lower density proxy sphere with a simple Boolean. So if I don't need to worry about the exterior specifically, if I'm looking at some other element, I can speed things up considerably by switching in this less dense mesh. So the way this works is on the blueprint, I have as part of the construction script, whether or not I am uh, using the proxy sphere. And if so, this is what a branch looks like in the blueprint, by the way, same exact thing. Um, I have my cheaper sphere if we are using the proxy mesh, and if not, then I'm setting this variable that's on the uh, blueprint to the more dense mesh. And then I'm passing that in as an actor property into the mesh sampler. So if we look at that, you can see you can override whatever the static mesh is, and it's very, very convenient. So I can use a cheaper mesh. So where I'm using the branch statement in here is whether or not I am using that proxy sphere, which is data that I get directly from that Boolean, I need to make the points a little bit bigger if I am using the proxy because there are a lot less of them. And if I didn't, they would be teensy tiny. So this is a, a simple example of how you can use this really, really convenient node to make your PCG graphs and your blueprints much easier to work with for an end user who may not be technically inclined and want to get into the weeds to enable or disable specific paths in your logic. So there you go, branch and switch. Hopefully this has been useful. Please feel free to leave any questions in the comment section and thank you very much.